first, before we go any further, how is your wife's family? Because she is half Palestinian. Yeah. Are they okay? Are no, they... They're, they're good. They're good. They are safe for now. Yeah. Um, in as like that last week, there was no internet, as you have. Yes. You know, I, I saw you tweet at the IDF. It's like, how can they know? You if know how many uh, views that tweet? That nearly 40 million. Yeah. Me just saying, how are they going to see this message if you've cut the yeah. internet off? Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if the IDF's like, why aren't the Palestinians liking my tweet? Because they don't see it. Right. <laughs> no, but I thought that was a perfectly yeah. correct yeah. assessment of it. Yeah. Um, but the reaction to that tweet I did was enormous, as everything is in this, mm. in this thing. And I had a lot of people say, finally, Piers, you get it, right? Finally, you get it. And, and I wanted to say, listen, I'm, I'm trying to reach a place where I get this, but mm. it's an incredibly complicated issue mm. for someone who is not Arabic or Jewish to poke their head into. And I've had to cover it as a journalist for a long, long time. I think I said to you before that I was editor of the Daily Mirror in England when we opposed the Iraq war, for example. So, you know, I have taken stands on this thing. On this one, I find, and I'm going to be completely straight with you, I discussed this with Jordan Peterson um, mm. this week, and he did a pretty incendiary tweet in which he said, give them hell, Netanyahu, enough is enough. And he was actually very self-reflective about that in the interview we did this week, where he later issued a 20-minute video because he said sometimes a, a one-line tweet can be unnecessarily inflammatory to people. Much better to take time to explain it. Here's, here's where I've got to with this conflict now. I viewed what happened on October the 7th as a, an absolutely appalling atrocity, a terror attack of unimaginable horror. And I absolutely think that Israel has a right to defend itself from the people who committed it, Hamas. And I've questioned for the last three, four weeks what is a proportionate response? And I have said repeatedly, I don't know the answer. I want people who have a view to have a view about that. And I'll ask you again about where you think we are with this. I also acknowledge that Hamas live amongst civilian population in Gaza. And therefore, if you do what the Israelis are currently doing, which is a ground offensive into Gaza, a lot of civilians are going to get killed. And at what point does that become disproportionate or even illegal and I don't know the answers to those questions. And I have a moral quandary because my instinct is to say that Israel has no choice but to respond to what happened in a very forceful manner. I understand why they want to eliminate Hamas altogether. I understand that if they feel they can, then perhaps we can move to a, a, a two-state solution or peace or whatever it may be, although I don't think Netanyahu will ever be the person to do that. But the, the moral question for me is at what point does this become disproportionate? And when you see thousands of children being killed in Gaza, it fills me with utter horror. And then people say, well, do you condemn it? And I find it very easy to condemn Israel turning off the water, Israel turning off the power. I think it's terrible what's happening in the West Bank with the settlers. I think that the stuff there is completely easy to condemn. But can I hand on heart condemn Israel trying to destroy Hamas after what they did on October the 7th, that is where I'm struggling to find myself saying I condemn it because I believe that they are right to try and destroy Hamas. Now, what do you feel about my moral quandary? Well, there is, there's a lot of points, very lot, and I think it, this, is, this will kind of like uh, lay the ground rules for that uh, interview. There is the whole thing about like, is it right to defend itself, the condemnation? First of all, let's start with condemnation. Yes. You want my opinion? Yes. Condemning Hamas or condemning Israel? Yes. Completely useless. Mm. Completely useless. Why? You, I condemn Hamas, you condemn Israel, interview is over. What happened? Nothing. Mm. It is just checkpoints, like morality checkpoints. But I've interviewed a lot of pro-Palestinians, for example, some of whom will immediately say, I unreservedly condemn the terror attacks of October the 7th mm -hmm. and then go on to criticize yeah. Israel. And I think that's a very, well, it's a position I can completely respect. Yeah. But I find it much harder to respect a pro-Palestinian guest on my show if they simply resolutely refuse to say yeah. that they can condemn the terror yeah. attacks. Yes. I find that less yeah. worthy of respect. But you see, this is the problem with the news. We go into the circular motion of the same as one thing that I have noticed. Mm -hmm not just on the coverage of these events, the, the, the events before and before and before, 
Every time this starts, people say, we don't know what's happening. It's a very complicated situation. Right. What is happening now? And for me, as a viewer, if a conflict that's been there for 75 years and the media with all this technology has been covering it and we hear the same exact words, we don't know what's happening. It's complicated. It's a very complex. That is a failure of the media apparatus. That is the failure to themselves and for the audience because why every time this happens, it seems like it is happening from, from, from point zero. And I think to help understand that, I will get to the f October 7th. I will get to the condemnation. I will get to the self-defense. But I think maybe we can do, we, we have like all the time in the world, yeah. and we can discuss, this, could, this interview could be a bookmark, yeah. a landmark for maybe looking at that conflict yeah. in a deeper way that nobody had gone there before. Yeah. We had the views, we have people waiting, yes. you know, as I said, I'm the least qualified to discuss that, but it's an opportunity not, to use listen, it. Listen, I'm not massively yeah, well qualified I, myself. Yeah, both of us. I'm, like, a, I mean, I'm, an, look Ar at us. I'm two, an Irish Catholic, I mean, right? Look at us, yeah, two privileged people, one white, one, mm. one white, white wannabe, <laughs> discussing, <laughs> discussing the, the, the most complex conflict of, mm. of, our, of our history. But 